Hi Hungry, I'm Dad, and welcome to Slothy and Cinema, the channel where I talk about cinema and less about sloths. I don't know why sloth is in the title, I just think they're neat. Anyways, now a word from our sponsors. We don't have any sponsors, but maybe we will eventually. Anyways, on to the video! In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> Movies have always been a source of comfort for us. Maybe we come home from a long day at work, we grab our dinner, we sit down in front of the TV, and we select something to watch. Or maybe, if you're like me, you just end up scrolling through Netflix without ever finding anything to watch, and by the time you've found something, your food is cold and you've lost your appetite completely. In either case, we turned on the TV for a reason, and that reason was entertainment. More often than not, that entertainment is found in dodging bullets, transporting ticking time buses without brakes, um, dancing on park benches with Ryan Gosling, or professing your love to a skater girl while coming down off a heavy acid trip that left you thinking you were a sexy Barbie doll. The films we choose in these instances are more of an escape than they are a serious portrayal of our existence. Let's face it, after a long day of grading papers or dealing with pushy clients, the last thing we want is to come home and watch a two-hour depiction of a failing marriage, or any movie where we're left wondering if the dog dies. We have enough grievances in our lives without having to watch a Crispin Glover film about an office clerk who slowly goes insane and dies without ever having left the office, leaving a small but inarguable mark of death upon his boss who falls into the same trap as him out of sympathy and despair. By the way, if anyone does want to watch that film, it's titled Bartleby, and it's an insane psychedelic trip in all of the strangest ways, as is any other Crispin Glover film. But that aside, sometimes what we really want in a movie is something that is going to resonate with us on a deep, personal level. Something that reflects who we are deep down. Something that provides us with a sense of normalcy and familiarity, and a significant lack of explosions and Jason Statham. Something that provides us with everything that we know and everything we don't, expertly entwining those two in a neat little package of hyperrealism and surrealism. Movies in this small niche are as silly and out of this world as they are truthful and serious and gritty. They resonate with us on a deep and personal level because they are us. They depict our day-to-day -day lives in a way that feels so true to reality, and yet there's this small boundary of surrealism that allows us to separate ourselves from the fictional escape that we look for on screen. These characters are average. They're nothing special. They're not the chosen one. They're not underdogs. They're just simply everyday people. And what's so good about using this as a concept is that it allows us to see ourselves as outside of ourselves without severing the contact between us and our daily jobs and the mundane tasks that we often loathe doing. The people in these films are often bored, tired of their lives, or are stuck in a rut much in the same way we are. Take office space, for example. This master of dry absurdity follows Peter Gibbons, a 30-something-year-old programmer working for your average, uninteresting tech company. Peter has two co-workers he gets along with and a boss that he actively avoids confronting out of a combination of fear, annoyance, and a sheer disinterest in his boss's mouth-breathing, umming and awing. Peter has a loveless, stale relationship with his girlfriend Anne, who cheats on him behind his back with the very boss he despises, yet encourages Peter to go to couples therapy with her to fix their partnership. He dreads waking up and shuts down in his mini-apartment to recharge every time he gets home from an unproductive day at the office job he hates. His life is normal to a comedic degree, allowing us to laugh at the sad realities he faces while also connecting to this reality on a deeper level than we would characters like Ace Ventura, Ferris Bueller, or Deadpool. The hyper-reality of films like this is often shown through dry comedy and long stretches of time in which absolutely nothing happens, but where the subversion from reality occurs is when the film takes things that our day-to-day -day lives often contain 
and replace them with dreamlike events. Dreamlike events such as witnessing a volcanic eruption in the Icelandic countryside, finding out that your entire life is being narrated by an author you've never met and you're the only one who can hear them, or finding out that your entire town is stalking you. These events are used to make are used to introduce dissonance and to disrupt the routines that, like Peter Gibbons, we often get stuck in. It's a necessary technique that allows us as the audience to detach ourselves from what's happening while still heavily relating to the characters and their every decision. In The Truman Show, Truman, the everyday everyman and all-around happy guy, living in a small seaside town in America, discovers that his entire neighborhood is following him. His quest for adventure and his longing for a life outside the suburbs is halted by sneaky travel agencies, raging sea storms, disappearing girlfriends, and a series of stalking incidents involving every member of his small community. Nothing about his life is normal, and yet everything he has ever done, felt, or experienced is entirely average. His life has changed significantly, and he is thrown into an adventure he himself did not sign up for. Throughout these films, events become stranger, more abstract. Life itself becomes unhinged, and we become aware as viewers that nothing will ever be the same. The characters in these films were always long overdue for a major life change, and sure enough, everything turns on its head. Throughout the unreal, life-threatening fiction that their lives have now become, these characters always have one thing going for them. Themselves. These characters don't become badasses fueled by revenge and survival. They don't want to save the world and look good while doing it. They simply want to get themselves back to normal. They maintain who they are as fundamental human beings throughout their journey, and they work hard to leave their difficult circumstances. Whether they be self-inflicted like Peter Gibbons' swindling side business, or purely circumstantial like Harold Crick of Stranger Than Fiction, a sad, lonely IRS agent who discovered that he is the soon-to-be-dead protagonist of a dramatic novel he had no part in making. These circumstances are never world-threatening, they simply threaten the ecosystems of the main characters and their lives, and because of that they do the only thing that anyone would really think to do in these situations, and that's to live. These films, or more importantly the characters within them, teach us something that heroes never could, and that's self-love. Each decision the character makes is driven by a very strong sense of self. We as humans want normalcy, we deserve normalcy, but we also want love, happiness, contentment, and safety. And that's what these characters strive for. In The Truman Show, Truman makes a tough call when, rather than serving the entire world's population by maintaining his position on the world's biggest reality show, he decides to leave a situation that actively harms his health. He sets a boundary. His life is no longer everyone else's, it's his own. He gets to make his life, and he gets to control it. No one else gets to partake in it unless he actively makes the decision to let them. And even then, they don't get to control it the way that they used to. In Stranger Than Fiction, Harold Crick confronts the author that has attempted his death at nearly every turn, and merely has a conversation explaining that he deserves to live. There's no big battle, no fist fight, no big twists, just a guy standing in front of an author and setting boundaries, choosing to love himself and value the life that, until that moment, had remained a complacent doormat. He learned to treat himself with the respect he gave to others. Peter Gibbons decides to quit his bank robbing days and live out an honest life, ultimately setting boundaries and choosing a life of happiness. His ill-earned cash hadn't earned him happiness, but neither had his job. Everything in his life had been one big mistake, until he took the reins and learned to love himself. In each case, these characters, these normal, average people, living out normal, average lives, learned a valuable lesson that the magic of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, however delicious and wonderful, never taught us. We don't have to change the world, but we can change our worlds. Our lives don't play out the way that we intend or the way that we want, need, or deserve. And oftentimes we get stuck doing jobs that we hate, living in boring, stale seaside towns, and fixating on taxes. But throughout these big life roles that get placed upon us, we can make do with what we're given if we choose ourselves. We can learn 
to do the small things, like surround ourselves with people we love, do hobbies that genuinely matter, practice self-care, set boundaries, and most importantly, give a crap about ourselves. The charming yet painful reality within this genre of hyper-realistic surrealism lends itself to one overarching theme that we could all benefit from. And through these films, I think we can all benefit from learning when and where to put our foot down and say... In case I don't see ya! Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite films are that fit in with this vibe. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have any extra thoughts on the matter? I would love to know. Until next time, this has been Slothian Cinema, signing out.